Hello and welcome to the final episode of my three-part Super 8 series. Today I'll be discussing multiple reasons why Super 8 is super great. It's a pun. Firstly, I'm going to school you guys a bit about celluloid physical film. Standard and Super 8mm, 16mm, 35mm and IMAX 70mm are all types of film formats still used in the professional industry as well as education, despite it being a much more costly and time-consuming process than working with digital video. As many of you who have worked with film photography before will know, that physical film produces an image which is far superior than digital photography. This is because film captures the actual light on the exposed film, whereas the sensor inside of a digital camera only captures an impression of the light and displays them as digital squares, which we know as pixels. The digital colours are only an impersonation of what your eye can actually see. In terms of capturing light and colour, digital will never have the same property as film. Also, there's a workflow when working with physical film. Physical film forces everyone in the production and pre-production stages to be more careful and thoughtful about their actions. The constraints you get when working with physical celluloid really tests a filmmaker's decision-making ability. Even big Hollywood film directors support celluloid filmmaking. Christopher Nolan's recent film, The Dark Knight Rises, was filmed on IMAX 70mm. Nolan has stated in the past that he believes that the absolute move digital is devaluating what we do as filmmakers. Anyway, now back to specifically Super 8. Super 8 is the cheapest and easiest way to get into celluloid motion picture, and it offers a very unique, scratchy look with saturated colours. The look of Super 8 film is often associated with memories because of its use throughout the late 60s and early 80s for home video. Also, the fact that it's silent and combined with the scratches and pastel colours it makes these memories appear almost dreamlike. When in modern day productions, whether that be for television or film, when they try to achieve the look of Super 8, whether that be through actually using Super 8, or trying to replicate the look through digital editing software, but it never looks as good, it's often to portray memories or dreamlike sequences. Inside one Super 8 cartridge is 50 feet of film, and at 24 frames per second playback, that is about 2 minutes and 30 seconds. This is a huge constraint for the filmmaker, as you can't just go back and delete the footage you didn't like. But creativity is born out of constraints. To give you an example, you can't just go up to a writer and go, hey, write me a screenplay for a film, please. They won't know where to begin. Just a film? What kind of film? You need to give them constraints, like make it a horror, set it in Italy, and uh, write a character which Natalie Portman can play. Now go do that, and that's much easier than starting with no constraints at all, besides it has to be a film. Filmmaking is always a series of problems you overcome. When working with the constraints of Super 8, you must be selective, you must be conservative with your shots, you must be very careful with everything, like the aperture, the focus, everything has to go perfect the first time. And it's because of the creativity born from the constraints of Super 8 that film events have been established like Straight A, which, by the way, is being recognised by Cannes Film Festival and every year has their Super 8 films screened at Cannes Film Festival, the most renowned film festival in the world. I am somewhat of a film diarist. I'm a big fan of film in my life and trying to capture real moments through film. When I do so, I have to adapt a similar mindset of a documentary filmmaker who has to adopt the sixth sense of knowing what to cover on film and also when to begin recording whilst being aware of the constraints like the amount of remaining footage you have. And also the fact that you record every shot without it being played back to you once until you have it developed and when it comes back developed it's one sequence, one almost edited sequence. The idea that I love is that you can go out and capture these moments, capture these memories, and send them off to be developed, and then it comes back as a physical thing, a physical film, which you haven't seen before. You've filmed every shot, and you haven't seen any of it before, and you play it back. And there's just something about that process which is very rewarding. Well, I have a package with me today. I put the camera down. Gotta be careful. Oh my god. Oh, this right here is my film. Okay, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm excited. I'm just gonna, it's just gonna be like a massive blast of nostalgia. It's gonna be like this for a while, but then 
Oh my god! I... Oh, that came out so nice! It looks so good! Oh my god! Look at that! Oh my god! <laughs> this is so lovely! This is like a dream! It's like... It looks so cool! <laughs> this is me! <laughs> that is you! Look at that guy! I remember getting that shot and I remember feeling really happy when he went by. <laughs> oh my god, that's gorgeous! <laughs> yeah. And there's me, it's like a story. It's like a really nice dream. Oh my god. That was... That was really nice. That, I don't know what to say. I'm really happy with that. Thanks for watching.